Traders Club. Uh, today's August 3rd, 2018, Friday. Uh, as I record this video, market should be open another uh, hour and a half or so. So you should be seeing a little bit of uh, flashing lights on your left. Let's keep it simple today. Let's look at Spider, IWM, and XLF, the banks, and we'll call it a day. I hope you guys had a good week trading this week. Uh, market seems to be uh, more in a docile, docile manner uh, last couple weeks here as you can see something we've been talking a lot about if you've been following me on uh, Twitter and stock toys and YouTube here actually a little uh, announcement before we get into the analysis today uh, I'm going I am going to turn off YouTube comments going forward uh, because I'm trying to consolidate all the questions and comments into one which is something that I check the most at least I, I check at least once a day on on Twitter I'm not a big I just want you to know that I'm not big on social media so I'm not a, I'm not one of those person that you follow on Twitter where I'm on Twitter all the time commenting every second every minute every hour replying everything you say and just right then I, you know what I'm saying even on my phone I don't sit there sit there and check my Twitter feed I don't do that even if I see a notification I won't check it. I I, I, I perceive and I I I, I uh, reckon that uh, my life quality of my life uh, is more important than sitting there mindlessly uh, just going through t uh, feeds and stuff like that. And I, I I and again that's just me. That's just how I view social media. I kind of look at it kind of negative in your quality of life. And uh, there's some benefit for it. Obviously, there's a good information you can find depending on who you follow and things like that. But so I'm trying because I feel like I'm just I don't want to go on YouTube and, 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 and you know and comment and, and, and reply and then I, got, I don't want to go on Twitter and so obviously if you're listening from stock Twitch I, I don't tweet much from stock Twitch I tweet the most on Twitter so uh, Twitter at 2k Kim that's where you can follow I be I'll be uh, turning off comments on my YouTube starting this video and going forward. So if you have any questions or any kind of comments, uh, you can always uh, ch check my uh, Twitter or, or you can uh, reply at 2K Kim on Twitter. And like I said, I check Twitter at least once a day. Everything else I don't I don't check. Like YouTube, I might not even check for several days. Stock toys, I might not even check for a whole week. So if you ask me questions and stuff like that on Stock toys, I might not see it for at least two, three days or so. So at least, uh, so I can consolidate that and uh, you know if there's any questions something like that I can check I can just check my Twitter feed and get back to you guys on it so let's start with spider uh, spider obviously uh, we you know if you've been following me if you've been following my videos we've been tracking gaps and uh, I, I'm sure if you talk if you go through any of your video lists that you go through every weekend uh, with these so-called crews and people and they're all they'll you won't hear anybody talking about gaps right but gaps are important gaps are very very important and you want to track them especially you want to know things you know kind of a minor to intermediate term movement and so if you've been following my videos you know that I've been tracking gap we've been tracking this gap here we've been tracking that gap we've been talking about how those downside gaps must be filled almost every video I've been talking about it that wish has came true for the bulls. The gap is now filled. Both of these, those gaps are open for how long? Almost five, six months. It's been open. The longer it's been, it, the longer these gaps open, the more hectic it becomes for the opposing party. For this scenario, opposing party is who? Bulls, right? This is a reason why it got tough here and got tough there. This thing tanked instead of going right back up because it was failed attempt of this gap fill from the bulls, right? Failed and then things got difficult, but bulls made its way on up. We cultivated higher lows, which we've been talking about, right? We've been talking about those higher lows. We also talked about they were in a stabilization phase where basing phase or consolidation phase because we didn't have lower highs and lower lows we did have a lower high here but we had an equal lows that puts in this price action we can actually categorize this into as a, a consolidation phase not a downtrend 
which we've been talking about for months. And then this downtrend resistance, we reclaimed above it, came down, retested it, got up, we made an equal. And I'm just recapping everything that I've been saying last six months every week. We made an equal high. We talked about that. What did I say back here? I said, I we needed to see some kind of higher low before making what? Higher high. And we did that. And something that I've been talking about is we've been in an uptrend as the, bear, as the bulls uh, continuing to cultivate higher low. The stupidest thing that I've been hearing through all this move that making the market has been making is making this move here is that stupidest thing I've been hearing is that people are talking about wave count. They say, well, this is a wave one, two, or some crap like that, and then it's supposed to go down. And then that didn't work, so then they change their wave count to this, and then it's supposed to do this, and then that didn't work out. That's the thing about wave count, is this is why you don't hear me using Elliott wave, wave count analysis on it, because a lot of people think that that works. It doesn't. You're just making crap up. See, you're not truly respecting what the price action is doing. You're making your own stupid ways to figure out what's next downturn is going to be. And those all Elliott Wave people out there right now is in pain, is in pain, right? And there's some useful in that. I do use some Elliott Wave when it comes to like a long-term targeting analysis and things like that. But you trying to wave out these stupid up and downs and trying to figure out what next downturn is gonna be, it is the stupidest thing I ever heard. And sometimes I, you know, I, I get these recommendations on these videos, and sometimes I watch it for a little bit. And this, I'm not gonna say who, but this guy was like from down here. They're like, oh, next wave kind. It's like one, two, three, four, five. And then that didn't work out, so it's gonna be like a one, two, three, four, five. And that didn't work out, so it's like one, two, three, four, five, or some crap like that. People just do some stupidest stuff when it comes to technical analysis. It's crazy. Only advice I can give you, if you're an avid follower of mine, is look at what's happening in front of you in your eyes and 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 respect what's happening in front of you stop like trying to make things make crap up that's why i use things i use words like tangible data right the data that we have everything that i do analysis when was the last time you hear me saying that well it's gonna go down make new lows i didn't even say that because we didn't have that uh data when was the last time you hear me say that well we're gonna make new low and then it's gonna do you do analysis with the data that is at hand. What we had back then was this. So I wasn't sure for sure, right? Remember we talked about this. With the eco lows, bears could possibly come down and make new lows, but we don't know that yet. Or if they were going to get up and make eco highs, we don't know that yet. So we needed more data, right? But then at the time, since we don't know what's going to happen in the intermediate term, we go back out and look at more like a primary term and, and, and see if we can come up with any kind of potential scenario. But nothing like, oh yeah, wave count one, two, three, four, five. Like, stupid, man. Just stop that stupid Elliott wave counting crap, man. That's why you're losing money. Um, so with gaps though, Gaps is something is there. It's a tangible data. I'm not. I didn't. I didn't make up this gaps, man. It's there, and they are open. And something I've been talking about is that bulls been, uh, you know, deploying these gaps, you know, and and the gaps been getting filled. However, when the gap gets filled, it tend to act as support. And it's been doing this here. Gap got filled. Act as support. This gap got filled. Act as support. Bears could not bring it down because of those gaps. Because they ignore these things that is there. And they want to do stupid wave count, right? And then we open, bulls open these two gaps. Something that I talked about in the last couple videos that I think... And this wasn't like a call or anything. I just felt like this time around, I thought that I felt as though bulls are going to what? Protect this gap, right? So this gap was open. The gap down happened on this day here, July 17th. Bulls protected it, brought it back up. We had a little pullback on that week. 
bulls still protected it and brought it back up and uh, last week we saw that decline even then and then yesterday we had a gap down bulls protected that gap and brought it back up so you can see bulls are fighting bulls are getting stronger bulls are getting their confidence back why do you think that is? I mean, the gaps were filled here. Gaps were filled there. How come this time around gaps were not filled here? Well, because we have clear above this level. Bears got nothing. Bears got nothing. Bears truly got nothing at this point. If they, were, if they had any chance, would have been here, bring it down, making new lows. Or maybe even here to make lower low, right? Low, high lower high lower high but once that equal high was created buyers were starting to turn the table around and once that happened i emphasized it we got now equal high right all we need what did i say all we need is higher high but did i call it like it's gonna come straight here to go up right there no i didn't know exactly where nobody does I don't know exactly where it's gonna bounce. I just was looking for the higher low. And then when this thing came down, what did I say? <laughs> what did I say? Oh, oh yeah, man. This is a middle of nowhere, bro. It's a, we're gonna have a head and shoulder formation. That's what these stupid people are gonna say, right? Without any kind of data that is there. And then that thing pretty much just went straight up. This is why you always wanna do your analysis based on tangible data that you see. That's why you don't just go there, well, we're just gonna do that. Why? Why do you think that? Because you're some stupid people that you follow on Twitter and YouTube that they said that gloom doom report says that the whole thing is gonna crash to nothing. Well, those people are saying the same crap in 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 here. Why? We're gonna do this, why? I'm gonna do that. Why? Right? This is the reason why market always fools the majority. And uh, this is the reason why um, you know majority of people are dumb when it comes to the market, understanding the market. And this is the reason why when when somebody has, majority of people are following somebody, it's because that person doesn't know how to look at the market, right? This is the reason why my video only gets about 1,000 views. And then and they will follow people who would, uh, who've been, who has been wrong since 2013 or 15, 16, they'll still get 10,000, 50,000 views because they still hasn't learned and market continues to fall those ignorance, right? It's not about, when it comes to market guys, it's not about, see, I'm not publishing some entertainment video. This is a market. The less, the more you hate my video, the better it is for me. The more you dislike this video, the better it's gonna play out. Do you understand? Because if I start talking about crash, I'll get much more views because what that's what everybody's thinking. And because of that, everybody's losing money. You gotta start understand this. And you know, I'll be, I'm gonna be honest with you today. I don't know why I'm in the mood today, to be honest. I don't know how long I'm gonna be producing these videos. Quite frankly, I really don't care me doing this. Um, Right now I'm single, I don't have family, I have a lot of time on my hand, I love doing these. But once I start to have family, if I don't have a girlfriend right now, if, if, if I get a family, then I don't, have, I don't wanna do it. I spend more time with my family and friends. Make my money in the market and that's it. Maybe help out with some members that I currently have. I don't know, I don't, I, I'm not aspiring to be a YouTube star or trying to get my awareness through this. So why are, enjoy it while let while it lasts? Because I cannot guarantee if I will do this for a long time. Because uh, quite frankly, I think. I mean, I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't consider this a waste of time because I do have a good followers that has been following me quite a bit, and you know I appreciate you guys. But uh, 
when it comes down to it, there's too many, you know, it's just, there are too many other, other YouTubers out there or analysts or gurus and experts out there on Twitter and YouTube and these places that I quite frankly think that they're all don't know what they're talking about. And I don't want to be part of that stupid pack or in that group. Because I believe that real traders out there who actually make real money, they're not on Twitter, they're not on YouTube. They're enjoying their life out there somewhere. That's eventually, now that I'm young and I have time, I have energy, I do this. But letting you guys know, it might not be, you know, <clears throat> probably not imminent. I probably could do this for a couple more years or something like that. But but we'll see, right? Um, so, yeah, I'm very, uh, obviously, I've. I've been very bullish on the on the market, and you guys know that I've been full on bullish buying the dips in these levels. And um, I think 300 is doable this year. If it's great, I think 310. Some of this end of this year, uh, I'm not sure, but 300 is pretty very well doable. Um, the market is not going to go straight up; it's going to be ups and downs. But as of today, as of today, actually, let's go to weekly because I think weekly makes a lot of sense. As of today, let's let's draw this line. This is a weekly, guys. Boom. Look at that. So, last time we had a, you know, last time we had a kind of a decline like this, a few times. Boom. So if we just go back to 2011 and 12, we had that. What was that? That was about. Um, that's 25 percent decline, actually. I know it looks different, but that trust me. That's here. I'll show it to you guys. See, uh, 23, 22, and this is I believe about 15. Yep, 15. Isn't that funny how this here, this here looks the same, but this was 23 and this is 14? It's because price starts to expand. That's why sometimes your eye plays trick on you like that. Um, and this was uh, what 12 percent? Yeah, about 12 percent decline. So when you so this is we we had that is occurrence happening this event that we saw you know this kind of decline in an uptrend was 2012 or 2011 and then 2015 16 and then 2018 All right three occurrences that we saw kind of a steep decline steep correction like 20 10 percent right 10 to 20 percent right and those times let's get rid of those those three times. When you look at weekly, when we when it broke above prior resistance, looking at things long term, what did the market do? It thrived. Did it mean that it kept going higher straight up? Because it went up, it came down. It went up, it came down and retested it. It went up, could come down and retest before going higher. I don't know. Maybe this time it will just go up and retest this. I don't know exactly, but looking at here, it did retest, but it got up and came down retest and thrive. It got up and came down retest, thrive. Maybe this time also could get up, retest and thrive. But that retest for me in my time frame not in, not important because if it pulls back, I'll just buy more. But looking at the trend perspective, you can see not only we're in a primary term uptrend, we have cleared above this prior resistance. And I gave you this kind of evidence, intangible data, and you're still calling for the crash, you're stupid. Doesn't mean it's guaranteed, it's a statistical certainty, right? Probabilistic certainty or potential outcome looking at this trend perspective it is a potential outcome but it's not guaranteed nothing is guaranteed not just in the market nothing is guaranteed in this world can you guarantee me that you're not going to get in a car accident tonight i'm pretty sure you have a probable probabilistic certainty that you're not going to get in car accident tonight because you haven't gotten in a car accident for the last 10 years i haven't gotten in car accident in the last 15 years so i'm i have a very 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 high probabilistic certainty that I'm not going to get in a car accident tonight, but I cannot guarantee that. 
Is this too confusing or do you understand what I'm saying? Spider looking good here. Next level 286. I mean, you know, that's that will be next resistance. And trying to figure out minor term movement, like it's gonna go up, come down, what's it gonna do? You know, that I I don't care about that. Because you're trying to figure that out, you that's gonna make your life very miserable. Let's go to IWM. IWM have been lagging a little bit. Um, I actually want to redraw this here, kind of more longer term. If you go all the way to here and then draw it, you can kind of see that that kind of connects a little bit. That's the neckline right there, 162. Um, we may see this thing finding support here going higher where we get up and then pull back. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to play out exactly in the minor term. But one way is we just going up from this point on, or we break below this support because I think a lot of bears are thinking that this is gonna be a double top. You know, the, the Russell 2000 is weak. Because of that, the whole market is gonna tank. There's gonna be people saying crap like that. What's gonna happen is, what could potentially happen is possibly if we do see a pullback, this thing coming down, breaking below the neckline, let people kind of freak out a little bit, and then doing something like that. So what do you think I'm gonna do this thing comes down to maybe 160? I'll be buying more. I mean, we found support here. I mean, it comes down, I'll buy more, but if you keep going higher, what do you think I'm gonna be doing? I'll just keep holding my positions. IWM looking good, looking good on the long-term perspective, right? Like I said, if bears were too big, if bears were, uh, if, if people were fearful of the market, if they thought the market was too high in 2016, well, they thought the market was too high in 2017. If they thought market was too high in 2017, they're going to think market is too high in 2018. If they think market is too high in 2018, they're going to think market is too high in 2019. That's how the market moves while the most retail traders sideline or trying to short and lose all their money it's a fact one last one let you guys go xlf uh xlf we got a couple of resistance here and here we clear this one but we're trying to get up here obviously this is the neckline look at this trap look at that got below it all these stupid people thought that this thing is gonna go down and crash the whole market because we made a new low then we see something like this on amd then we see something like this on uh, Intel, then we see something like this on Cisco, then we see something like this on almost everything, right? Do you really think that you come to the market and you draw a stupid line, right? That you like, and then and then you're gonna place your stuff just below it, the market is gonna respect it perfectly. The market is too savvy, right? And when I say stupid, I want you to understand in perspective that I'm not judging anybody. I was once stupid. We were all stupid at one point. When we were born, we were very stupid. We didn't even know how to talk or walk. But what happened? We've learned. We've learned. That's the important part. We're all stupid at one point, but we learn, right? We evolve. We become stronger, right? And uh, that's the important part because everybody likes to blame everybody else but themselves. Traders do this all the time. It's, it's, it's rigged. It's manipulated. The feds. Trump, bulls are, this is a funny part, but funny one, bulls are greedy. <laughs> They're so mad that they'll say bulls are greedy, but XLF, I think it's gonna do well. It's been lagging. Like something I've been talking about is that why not focus on the sectors and index that's been lagging instead of trying to chase Russell 2000. That's what you get. You trying to chase Russell 2000, what is the market is gonna do? Punish, right? But why not, instead of chasing something that has been moving, why not focus on the sector and indices that has been what? Lagging, lagging, right? Well, that's everything for me today. Uh, you guys have a wonderful weekend and good luck trading next week.